Okay, today we're going to take a look at adding a d development and staging server for your Drupal site. And we're going to go ahead and take advantage of the multi-site functionality in Drupal so that we're sure that we're working from the same code base. Also, we're going to be doing this um, entirely through cPanel simply because that's what a lot of people have and it can make things really easy. There are other ways to do it and you can use things such as FTP or um, if you've got your own server that you're hosting on that you have control of you can go and probably do it even easier but this should get everybody going So first thing we want to do is add the two subdomains to uh, for dev and staging. You could go ahead and use the um, you could go ahead and just use your own URLs external and just park them. And if you don't have X3, you might need to do that. But this way we can do it a lot simpler. So we'll start with dev. We'll go ahead and add that here. And a lot of times what you'll see is you'll notice it's trying to put it in its own folder. We want it to just go straight to the public HTML. And that's because all of the, that's how you take advantage of the multi-site functionality in Drupal. All of the domains and subdomains that you want to be running off the same code base need to be pointed to the same uh, root HTML directory. So we'll go ahead and create this. should only take a second. And then after that, we will go ahead and create the staging domain, subdomain. All right, after a short pause, we went ahead and created both of those subdomains. As you can see here, uh, dev, um, and then this is the route we're working on, wevolution.com and staging. Both of them are pointed to the public HTML folder. So now step two is we need to actually create two databases. And as you can see, yes, we have, we had deleted the others, they hadn't shown up yet. So we've got space for two more databases, which is good news. Let's come down here to the database. We're going to create one called dev and one called staging. Uh, what we're also going to do, just to keep things easy, is we're going to go ahead and assign the same user that we're using for the root site um, to each of these databases. And what's that, what that's going to do is keep things a little bit simpler for us because then we don't have to worry about remembering usernames and passwords for multiple databases. This is all the same site. We simply want a, a staging and a um, development um, version of the site. So we don't want to get too crazy. If you're really concerned about security, uh, by all means, go ahead and um, create additional users. So now we've created the, the two new databases in MySQL. We've also assigned the same um, admin user that we already had in place to each of these databases. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to actually populate those databases with some information. So let's go ahead and go to PHP my admin and you can see that both of these are empty. So we'll go to our main database and again we're doing all of this stuff very very simply and you can make it more complicated if you need to or if you want to but I would definitely suggest if you've not done it before you keep it easy up here we're gonna go ahead and export and we're going to export as SQL right there by default save it as a file and I'm just going to just throw it to my desktop there okay and that's uh, downloading there. So what we want to do is after that's finished downloading we will then go through and import that into the two new databases. Now that that's finished downloading we're going to go ahead and switch over to 
either of the other two databases. It really doesn't matter which one. And we're going to import. We're going to choose the file that we had just downloaded. And it should be right over here. And then we're going to go ahead and start the import process. Now this can take a few minutes, depends on your connection speed as well as that of your server. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all of those SQL commands to create and populate the tables exactly as they were, or excuse me, are on the current main production site. And this kind of gives us a, a the canvas that we want to start with. Um, you, there are other things that you can do. You could just start from scratch, but this will kind of give us a little bit of a head start, um, and then we can go from there. All right, we have successfully imported the information in the databases, and what we want to do is um, we're going to move forward very quickly now. It's all going along smoothly. We're going to go ahead and open up the, um, the file manager, and what we want to do with this is go into the sites and now we want to actually create two new folders and these folders will be actually called by the um, the subdomain names and then now that we've gotten that done we're going to go ahead and go into the default folder and edit the settings.php go ahead and select it all copy it and close out Again, we're going very quickly, but we're trying to do all of this through cPanel just to make it easy. You can do it manually in other ways. I'm going to go ahead and go into the first one. I'm going to create a new file, and we're going to call it settings.php. We're going to edit this file, and we're going to paste. We're going to repeat this process for the other one as well. There's only one tiny change that I'm going to make here. I'm going to scroll up, I'm going to find the section that talks about the database, and I'm simply going to change the name of the database um, itself. I don't have to change the username, I don't have to change the password, I don't have to change the server information for that. I simply have to make those changes. Uh, you might also want to make the changes here as we scroll up a little bit to the base URL. It may not be necessary for you, but I would suggest you go ahead and do that. I'm going to um, do that real quick, and then we're almost done. Okay, now that uh, we've completed all that, it is time to test. So, we look down here, we go to the first URL, the main one, and everything comes up fine. We go to the staging, and that one comes up and in fact I've already made one little change here to test and it says staging under my first test post here we go to the dev comes up and I had already made a change here to the dev so what we can see is that on each of these we've got um, we're running from the same code base we're running from subdomains and each one has its own unique MySQL database now what we can do from here is make whatever changes in development we need to and then migrate those changes over to the active site. Uh, a more advanced technique that you might want to investigate would be to use the, um, in the settings.php, go ahead and, and share some of the database um, tables, actually put all of them on the exact same database, but use the prefixes to share some of the tables for example, for the um, the users, uh, maybe for the um, some of the gross settings, things like that. That can get a little bit difficult and tricky to make that work. Also, which tables you share will strongly depend on what you're trying to accomplish and what you think you're going to be developing. So hopefully you've uh, learned something here about multi-site, and please remember you can use this exact same process to do multi-site hosting for um, just about any application that you have.